An Australian standard was released in late 2022, which provides three treatment levels for steel fabrication defects to reduce the risk of coating failure. This coated steel item shows a number of such defects and how rust breakthrough has arisen within a matter of a few months of exposure. Sharp cut edges are perhaps the best known and most common. Weld defects such as spatter, porosity and undercut can appear on welded fabrications. Rough welds can also cause breakdown, although this example has relatively smooth weld cap. These, along with other defects such as burrs, pits, shelling and laminations, have been known corrosion initiators for many years. Specifiers would rely on guidelines from standards such as ANS NZS 2312 and coating supplier data to define them and possible treatment. An international standard, Part 3 of the ISO 8501 series on surface preparation, was introduced in 2001, but not taken up in our part of the world. Steel fabrication standard ASNZS 5131 introduced defect treatment levels based on the ISO standard. From this, it was decided to produce a formal Australian standard. The ISO standard was generally acceptable, but had some weaknesses, so a modified version of this standard, AS 8501-3, was produced. Three levels of treatment in the ISO standard, P1 light or limited treatment, P2 thorough treatment, P3 very thorough treatment were adopted. The standard has 16 examples of such defects, with some of the more common ones shown here. For weld spatter, P1 requires only loose spatter to be removed, P2 lightly adhering spatter removed, and P3 has to be free of spatter. Weld ripple or profile treatment varies from none for P1 to a smooth finish for P3. Treatment of edges is perhaps the most important. P1 requires limited treatment in that no sharp fins remain. P2 requires a chamfer of at least one millimetre and P3 rounded to a radius of at least two millimetres. With laminations, shelling and rolled in matter, all levels require the surface to be free of such defects. For grooves and indentations, no treatment is necessary for P1. Defects are radiused and smooth for P2 and completely removed or filled for P3. These examples should give an indication of the defects and how they must be treated. So how does the Australian standard differ from the ISO counterpart? The grades are referred to as treatment grades in the local standard. ISO uses the term preparation grade, which is confusing as the term preparation is also used for levels of blast cleaning. The local standard notes that a number of these defects are not applicable for hot dip galvanised coatings as galvanised coatings build up on sharp edges. It refers the reader to AS NZS 2312 Part 2 for design and fabrication concerns or these coatings. The main difference with the ISO standard is that the 1mm chamfer is required for edges for the P2 level in the local standard, while the ISO standard no treatment is necessary for this treatment level. To show the value of a chamfer, we can refer to some work done by Korean researchers on the effect of different edge treatments on local coating thickness. Using a solvent bond epoxy, they looked at a sharp edge, chamfers and a radius. They measured the coating thickness on the corner as a percentage of that in the flat regions known as the edge retention ratio and plotted this as a function of film thickness. For a sharp edge, coverage improved with thickness but even a thick coating had considerable loss at the edge. With a radius there was very good edge coverage for thick coatings and even thin coatings had improved buildup. A single chamfer was as good as a radius for thick coating systems, although not as good for a thin coating. So for a thin coating, even a radius had a loss of thickness, although a chamfer was still better than no treatment. For thick coatings, either treatment would be acceptable. Incidentally, the Australian standard allows three edge passes with a grinder as an acceptable treatment when a radius is required. These results would suggest that three-pass treatment would be very close to a radius. There are tools available today that create a radius in a single pass.
So how does the specifier select the required treatment level? Treatment of these defects is labour intensive and thus expensive. In fact, for a complex structure, repair of defects could be more costly than painting. You do not want to specify a high level if this is not necessary. The most important factor is the environment the structure will be exposed to. In a mild indoor environment, P1 would be acceptable. In a more corrosive atmospheric environment, say ISO C2 to C3, P2 should be adequate. P3 should be specified for severe atmospheric, chemical, immersed and underground environments. As we've just seen, thicker coats tend to cover defects better than thin coats, so a lower grade may be acceptable with a high thickness. There are edge retentive coatings available which hold up better on sharp edges, but the additives required to achieve this may reduce the durability. Also note that stripe coating, giving edges, welds, etc. an extra coat with a brush is still beneficial even for P3 treatment. Speaking of specification, the new standard makes the specifier's job easier. In the past, you needed to list the defects and their treatment and hope that you covered all possibilities. An old specification might have been, sharp edges shall be ground to a smooth radius of at least two millimetres. All well spatter shall be removed. All rough welds shall be ground to remove sharp edges, undercuts and other irregularities. Pinholes should be filled with weld, metal and ground smooth. Any defects which show up after blast cleaning shall be repaired. With the new standard, making such treatment mandatory is simply achieved by referring to the standard, noting the required treatment grade. Such as surface defects such as weld spatter, burrs and sharp edges shall be treated to meet the requirements of treatment grade P3 as defined in AS 8501-3. In conclusion, be aware that fabrication defects such as sharp edges and weld spatter can cause early breakdown of paints. Australian Standard 8501-3 is a modified ISO standard which describes these defects and gives three possible treatment levels, P1, P2 and P3 from light to very thorough. Such treatment is costly and the level required would generally depend on the severity of the environment, although coating thickness can be an issue.